Hey, <laughs> how are you? This is Jill, Jill Bullock for, of Jill and Trail, one of the founders of Detour Movement Inc. And you already know, we believe when you renew your mind, you transform your life and your relationships and your business, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So I'm so glad that you take a moment to check out this video and you guys, I am like, you know what I'm saying? I am so excited. I'm just like overjoyed to be sharing this with you. You know what? At the beginning of this year, this is 2016. I'm not, not knowing when you're watching this video, but I'm sure it's still going to be just as applicable then as it is now. In the beginning of this year, God gave me four words to focus on for the vision of detail movement. And as I move forward with, you know, helping women to make the right choice in their dating relationships. Is, and he told me that I needed to go deeper. He told me I needed to go deeper. He told me I need to operate in excellence. He told me that we need to be focused, right? And, and, and it just has been, that's the journey we've been on. Being, well, operating in excellence, being focused, being intentional, and going deeper. And this is one of the core things, teaching this lesson today, what I'm going to tell you guys today about what is a good man versus a God man is one of those levels of going deeper because this if i'm really honest when i talk about a good man that's several of the characteristics that i listed on our very first blog which we're almost at a five-year anniversary now back in march of 2011 as most of the things i pulled out for a good guy and now as i go deeper in understanding my faith going deeper into a closer relationship with god and going deeper for the women and the people that i serve we're going to talk about what is the difference between a good guy versus a god guy or a good man versus a godly man and i am just so stoked so hey let me just take a minute to introduce myself i am jill bullock and i am one of the founders of detail movement inc and i told you what we do and one thing i'm really just passionate about is helping women make the right choices in the dating relationships this is something that i'm really like serious i i i help mentor, I help coach women, if you want to call it coaching, whatever you want to call it. Um, I help women in this area because it's such an important area. And so let me just take you on a deeper dive on this topic, right? Like I said, this really could be a book. Maybe one day it will be. Maybe one day it will create a book. But today I'm going to give this to you in less than 10 minutes. So check it out. What is the difference between a good guy and a God guy? So a good guy or a good man knows God. He knows who he is. He's heard of Jesus. You know, he probably even believe in him. Okay, that's a, a good guy. Like he's has some type of spiritual awareness. Okay, cool. However, when you're talking about a godly man, he not only knows God and he don't only know of God or Jesus, he follows him. I feel like I got to hear right here. <laughs> he also, he follows him, right? And this is biblical. It's the word of God tells us in Luke 9, 23, that we are to deny ourselves and pick up our cross and follow him. So when you're talking about a godly man, he should be following Jesus in his life. Now, the second thing I'm gonna tell you is that a good guy should not be somebody that's easily angered. I always like to use road rage, or some people say, oh, road rage don't count. But I think you should at least be, you should, you, hey, road rage does count. You need to be paying attention. So if somebody that's not easily angered, how do they respond when you don't do exactly what they ask you to do? How do you respond when an unexpected situation? How do they even respond when they have a loss in their family or things don't go their way? Or even road rage, right? How, you know, how do they respond in those situations? And the other thing is a godly man will illustrate or demonstrate the fruit of the spirit. You're like, okay, Joe, what are you talking about? The fruit of the spirit. I'm talking about they will demonstrate godliness. They will, they will excuse me, goodness. They will demonstrate long suffering or what people call patience. They will demonstrate self-control. They will demonstrate kindness. You know, these are just some of the fruits of the spirit. You can check all of them out. If you check out Galatians 5, 22, 23, it lists all of the fruits of the spirit. But if a, God, a godly man will demonstrate that, he won't be easily angered, okay? The third thing I have here is that a good guy he acts from his mind. You know, sometimes they say a man acts from his second head. Not talking about that. <laughs> talking about from his mind. He thinks things through. He thinks analytically. All of that, great. That's a good guy. But when we talk about a godly man, he's not thinking just with his mind and, and, and being analytical and all of that cool academia type of stuff, right? <laughs> he is thinking and responding from his heart. That's the difference, you guys. Also, a good guy 
Hebrew will respect you. He will give you the proper respect, give you, you know, reverence to whatever, knowledge to all that is good. However, a godly man, he would respect and submit to God first and respect and love you like Christ loved the church. Now, come on, y'all, talking about going deeper in 2016. Who's with me here? <laughs> Who is with me here? So, hey, another thing is, has a strong, a good guy, has a strong head on his shoulder, right? However, a godly man has the mind of Christ. He has the mind of Christ, meaning that his, line, he, his thoughts line up with God's thoughts, right? So his decisions is going to line up with God's decision. Y'all ain't ready. So, <laughs> okay, the next thing I want to talk about is mind the company he keeps. He minds the company he keeps, right? He's, he's, he's a, a good guy will be, you know, he's not going to be hanging around with people making crazy decisions or doing things they ain't got no business doing. He's going to be lining himself with people that's making good decisions, right? Um, that's what a good guy would do. However, a godly brother, hmm, he will fellowship with other believers, Right? And yeah, just drop the church word on you. It's all good, whether you're church or unchurch. But if you're watching the scope, I imagine that you're somebody who are who are interested in a godly man, right? And so when they talk about fellowship with other believers, that means that a godly man will be around other Christian men. Okay? He ain't gonna be around a bunch of people that's in the world. Now we will minister to the world, but he will not spend his top five friends should not be people in the world. Maybe one of the five, maybe. But for the most part, he should be circling himself around other godly men and going to godly functions and doing things in that arena, participating in the men's ministry and all that. And I'm not saying he has to do every single thing. However, I'm showing you so you can see the difference because I can remember in a time where I had met one of the first good guys I've ever met. And I was just like infatuated with him and he was so fine and he had his low finances together and all of this. But when you peel back the layers of the onion, he had no God in his life. Like, what am I going to do with that? I'm a woman after the heart of God. What am I going to do to a man who don't know God? Nothing. And we ain't doing no ministry dating. That's another scope. I think I'm on scope. This is YouTube, but whatever. <laughs> That's another YouTube, okay? <laughs> so, will serve you over his self. A good man will serve you over his self. He's not selfish. He, he can make sacrifices. He can make compromises. But listen, a godly man will serve God before anything else. So, hate to break the news to you women or men or whoever watching this, right? But when you're in a relationship with somebody that's after God's own heart, it's not about you, which helps relieve you of the burden of trying to be everything to him because you don't need to be. That person's whole in Christ and you're just adding, the, you're just the icing. You don't want to be somebody's everything. So you want him to serve God first, right? Next thing I have here with a good guy is financially stable. So, you know, he got his little money together, you know, doing his thing financially. However, can we talk? A godly man manages his money God's way. This is a man who believes in tithes and giving something to the church, whatever that is, giving up his first fruit. Somebody who believes in serving, you know, and serving sometimes physically out in the community, however that may look for him. This is the difference, right? So the next thing I want to tell you, this is a 10th thing. This is 12 list, a list of 12 of you guys. I'm on number 10. So is a guy, a guy, a good guy is not led by his emotions, right? He has some emotional stability. You know, he's not just going off a whirlwind and like popping off, being all kind of crazy. No, that's crazy deranged. So a good guy will not do that, right? <laughs> he will be cool. Um, he will know how to content his emotions. However, a godly man, or like I say, a godly brother, he is led by the spirit and not by his emotions, right? That's a difference. Being led by the spirit rather than the emotions. So hey, a good guy may be spiritual, right? But a godly guy is led by his, is, is a good God, good God, oh, I, I, I'm getting tongue twisted. Okay, so a, a good guy is spiritual, but a godly man is just let God order his steps in his word. He crucifies the the sinful nature and the flesh nature every day and he's committed to serving God. He has made a decision to honor his body as a living sacrifice, 
right to God. And this is what it talks about in Romans 12, 1, which is one of the founding scriptures of the Soul Movement. And I just am so grateful that God revealed that scripture to me nearly five years ago because it's such a blessing. Meditate on that, Romans 12, 1 and 2. Okay, the 12th thing I got, can I get a drum roll? <laughs> drum roll, please, right? Okay, so the 12th thing is, he stands a good guy. Stands strong and is willing to protect you. Come on, y'all know y'all on me, Steve Harvey book, which I got some good tips from Steve Harvey book. I'm not trying to downplay it. Was it act like a man, think like uh, act like woman? What is it? Act like a man, think like woman. Whatever. Act like a man, think like woman. Act like a woman, think like a man. Whatever. You get the. You know what I'm talking about. And then he's talking about the guy should protect, and I agree. However, a good guy will try to protect you through his own strength and through his own might. But how many of you know that a godly man? will put on the entire armor of God and teach you how to do the same. And he will not just cover you, you know, from a physical way, he will cover you from a spiritual way. You know what I'm saying? So this is what we're talking about. And I'm just, I thank God because this is the divine message from God. I just, I just am so grateful that God had given me this message. And honestly, the truth be told, God's been dealing with me a lot because he's been giving me a lot of things, but I haven't been expressing them. And so today I'm taking this opportunity and I'm sharing this with you. And if you haven't, I wish I should have told you at the beginning to write these things down, meditate on this. If you're really serious about your God relationship, or if you're a woman who are after the very heart of God, then I am going to tell you that you need to connect yourself with a godly man rather than a good man. This is so important because I know so many of my sisters who, you know, was babies or developing in their spiritual journey. And as they matured in their spiritual journey, they've outgrown their husband and their husband cannot lead them spiritually. And that's what I was, well, that's what I was trying to say when he said, I said, the number 11, he, uh, a good guy will be spiritual, but a godly man will be able to lead you spiritually, right? Oh man, this stuff's so good stuff. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I, if you have enjoyed it, and forgive my shadow, like maybe you didn't even notice it. I just noticed it, but whatever. So if you've enjoyed this video, do me a favor and subscribe to this channel. Subscribe to this channel. You keep me in prayer because it's my hope to put up a video every week to support you. Because like I said, I've been called to help women in the singleness journey. I'm no longer single. I've been married right now for three years and I'm so blessed because I have an amazing husband and an amazing marriage. And it's not because of me, it's all because of God. And I want you to have that same thing. But it, I was so close to almost making the wrong choice. I was so close to almost losing my life because of bad decisions and because I was connecting myself with the wrong people. And I don't want you to have to go through that same situation, sis. You don't have to go through that. Even if you're a guy watching this, you don't, don't connect yourself with the wrong woman because it could destroy your life. So, hey, I want to invite you to a couple of places. I want you to invite you to check out our blog. We have a zillion stuff on our blog. Check it out. Engage with our blog. Leave comments. Right? Be sure to join our Facebook group at DMI for women only. The Facebook group is for women only. DMI, Fabulous I Am members group. That group is popping. My sister trails in that group and she keeps it on fleek. And we have a good time with other women of faith. And I also want to encourage you to follow me on Periscope at Joe Bullock, right? J-I-L-L-B-U-L-L-U-C-K.com. Follow me there. And also follow Detour Movement, D-E-T-O-U-R uh, Movement, right? You can follow us there. And I'm going to invite you to come with us to the conference this year because we have a conference every year and it's just phenomenal. This conference is about renewing your mind so you transform your life. This conference is about releasing the baggage bond of shame from your past. It's about restoring your mind, body, and spirit. It's about renewing your mind so you can transform your life and we're going to transform your relationships. And within the last year, we added transforming your business because we know so many people in this time of singleness, they find their purpose and their purpose is ministering to other people and we wanna help serve you in that area and help you to build your business from the ground up. So I'm just so stoked. So thank you so much for checking this video and watching all the way through. Subscribe, 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 leave a comment, and know always that I love you so much. I don't know you, but I know you were created by God, and I know you were created in his image, and I know you are a woman that's seeking the heart of God, and I'm just so excited for you. So I love you so much. God love is just so much greater that it can't even compare. Until next time, be blessed.